Hello and welcome to Clayton Limor's, the imaginary version on my model railway. It's nothing like the real thing, but I've tried to make a realistic Lancashire background to the trains. These first black and white photos give a general view and we'll look at more detail soon. I've tried to make it as personalised as possible, so quite a lot of the shops are named after my ancestors. The vehicles are suitable for the 1960s and quite a lot of them are the ones that I've known, gone to work in or my relatives and friends' cars. And the buses are also the right type, both Accrington Corporation and Ribble. I once went on the X23 to Clitheroe to visit my auntie about 1964. The lorries remind me of hitchhiking round the UK in the 1970s. Here's the street level station building. It's based on Accrington Station. Most of the waiting rooms, offices, etc. are assumed to be on the platform level. The taxi is similar to the ones which have been pictured at Accrington Station. All this section is scratch built using suitable stone cards, etched windows, and other details. There's only room for a small lay by outside the station. And this is the interior. It's hard to see in normal viewing, but I like to know it's there. I'm especially proud of the signs, the lift gates, the ticket windows and a seat at the back. Nearby is the bus stop and the station news little shop. There's usually some buses waiting around in this area too. I've tried to capture a typical 60s concrete bus shelter. Station Street is usually pretty busy because there's traffic lights holding all the traffic up and there's quite a lot of parking by the station. In my imagination, Station Street leads to Worley Road, the real main road through Clayton. Next to the station is Library Square with its imposing building which is the library on the ground floor and the college above. The idea is based on Ashton Underline Library, where I used to work. There's a solitary tree and in the background is the back of the town hall or the council offices. The war memorial is in the centre. I must apologise to the people of Clayton Limours. The real war memorial is much more impressive. Here you can see the platforms and how they relate to the station entrance on the bridge. On platform one can be seen the repeater signals for the splitting home signal at the other end of the platform. Left is to Paddyham High Level and Barrowford or the branch to Sladeburn, if it's still open when you visit. Right is the main line to Hapton and on to Rosegrove, Burnley and Yorkshire. On the other side of the bridge, we can see the traffic lights controlling the junction and the tight bend on the road back to Worley Road. The public conveniences, a vital part of any town, are conveniently placed by the bridge. The next picture shows a bit more of the shop, which is supposed to be owned by my great auntie Maud's husband. He had several shops in Accrington, but in reality, not in Clayton Limours. There's the Emporium, one of my favourite sorts of shop, where you can buy everything you could possibly need. The road goes round to the right, the buses go back to Wally Road along here. On the right is the factory entrance. Looking back towards Station Street, the front of the factory is in the distance, with Wilkinson's shop on the left and the pub on the right, and you can see the traffic lights. In my imagination, the factory belongs to Robert Dewhurst, my great-grandpa, who grew up in Accrington, starting with a market stall before the First World War. Later, his company did have a factory making children's clothing, but not in Clayton Limours. It's built from a much-modified polar kit. This is the picture of the workshop and factory, which you don't really see from the front of the layout but it's quite a nice little area. The other road with the chapel behind the tree and the big 
corrugated factory with some shops. There's a better picture of the chapel, which was scratch built as well. Not quite how I wanted it to look, but it's not too bad. And there's also William Crawshaw's shop. He was another relative, my grand's grandpa. Here we are looking back again with the pub railway inn and some back-to-back -back houses which have seen better days. There's another pair of shops. These names are also based on relatives. This is a Scaledale building with added shop fronts, a wooden kit. Here we have a view from the front of the layout showing the advert on the back of the shops based on one on the building next to Rosegrove Station. You can see how it all fits together in this part of the layout. This is the back of the shop with a yard and cobbled way through to the square behind the back to back houses, which has outside toilets. This picture shows the back of the pub as well. Back to the main street, the next building is part of the transport cafe. This is an older timber building with the Johnny's Cafe sign on the roof. At the back of the building is a small yard with an old van body for storage, a gas tank and general clutter. The front of Johnny's Cafe. This is a 1950s concrete building next to a large lorry park for the driver customers. It's built from the old Airfix control tower kit. On the other side of the road is a terrace of houses built on the slope. This was quite a challenge to build, but the sloping row is typical of East Lancashire. I'm not at all sure that the roof is the right style for Clayton and Accrington though. The next two pictures are details. First, a coal delivery lorry with full and empty sacks and plenty of grime, very common in the 60s and 70s. My loco tenders and wagons are loaded with real coal spilled from deliveries to our neighbour. The second is a ragbone man with his horse-drawn cart. Very good at holding up the traffic in those days. Another view of the lorry park shows a Manchester liner's container transported by road. In 1968, only railway-owned freight liner containers could be carried by rail. This view also shows the four council houses, constructed using the back of Airfix semi-detached houses. I think they look the part. Here's one in a closer view. The Austin Cambridge is identical to one owned by a friend. Maybe that's him with the spade standing by his gate. Next is the post box, handy for this end of town and the blacksmith's buildings. The street light here is still an old gas light converted to electricity. Here's the full extent of the smithy, but the look is getting more rural with stone walls and a few trees. The old barn was the first building here. The works has been expanded by various newer buildings, mostly from scene craft ready-made buildings. The road heads out of town towards Great Harwood, passing road signs typical of the 1960s. Also at this end of town is a footbridge crossing the railway to more factories and houses on the other side. It's a good place to watch the trains as well. The view back shows all the buildings, including the works behind the terrace with its typical chimney. The other end of the bridge leads to a road of sets right next to the railway. Some empty coaches are waiting in the goods loop. This view shows the road bridge and the up starter signal with a distance for the next signal box. Train soon gets to Rishton to join the main line from Accrington to Blackburn. You can also see the down home signal the other side of the bridge. Heading back towards the station, we can see the signal box and the Goodson Shunters building. 
The signal box was built using Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway etched windows using a download from Milneroy Junction as a drawing. I'm quite pleased with it. The Shunters building was a Scaledale station building. The platforms are in view again with a brake van in the head shunt and a few wagons parked behind the signal box. So there it is. As you've probably worked out, most of the buildings are kits already made but changed around to make them more individual. These range from old airfix kits and Keybury to Scaledale and Backman Scenecraft. I'm pretty happy with the results, although there is always room for improvement. My aim was to create a typical Lancashire scene with 1960s details. My modelling is nothing like up to the high standard of some, but I think captures the atmosphere I was looking for in the limited space I have. At the back of the layout are sidings for up to nine trains. This part is not so tidy. The layout usually works surprisingly well, with the hidden sidings allowing interesting sequences of trains to be run. The control panel has now seen better days but works well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking at the buildings and that there was not too much information about my ideas. Keep watching my videos. Next time there will be some trains running.